uh, is a good candidate. Thank you so much, Krishnan. Thank you. Sir. Uh, we'll we'll switch to the last speaker of today's session. Sessions, um, um, our own Mr. Balmukant Singh, E for Life PhD student um, of Dr. Manisha uh, B. Ramesh. He has been working under her as a geologist in Amrita landslide project. His strong areas are geology, geophysics, remote sensing, and hydrology. Balmukand, stage is yours. Thank you very much, sir. Yeah. I hope my screen is visible. Yes, yes. Om Amriteshwari Nama. The topic of my presentation is monitoring slope subsurface dynamics with geophysical imagining. And the case study which I am going to present is in a collaboration with British Geological Survey, which is a deployment site in Munar, Kerala. Connecting the dots with the conference. Uh, well, river and water bodies are always the place where human civilization and hu human developments have taken place. And whenever we talk about water sustainability, it is always very important to plan about the uncertain risks that they cause. The figure in the right hand side is a pick from Rudraprayag uh, before 2013 in Uttarakhand. And this is another pick from the same area uh, after 2013 floods of Uttarakhand. So we can see that how uh, the houses, the development that was there was completely washed away. Uh, in just one event. So the issues that we are facing today are the climate change impact, uh, which is the very heavy rainfall. When it happens, uh, it is happening in a small temporal window and a huge amount of water is coming in, which is bringing up flooding and also super saturation in the soil, which is relating to landslides. Uh, we are seeing that landslides and floods are getting interrelated. Uh, sometimes landslides are triggering floods in some other area and also when the flood goes into some area it is triggering landslides at the same time we are seeing that there is water scarcity in summer so it means that uh, while planning for the sustainable development in the water we have we have to consider the aspects of landslides flooding and the associated risks that that is coming in now coming to the project the ongoing collaboration work uh, with uh, BGS is uh, having a deployment site where our Amrita landslide early warning is in Anthurian colony, where 2005 there was a ma major landslides and about 13 people have lost their lives. In the same place, there is a ERT prime system that has been de deployed in collaboration with BGS, which has four lines and 64 electrodes. So I will be mostly talking about the BGS deployment because about Amrita deployment, there will coming in. The prime system is a proactive infrastructure monitoring and evaluation system. It's basically an electrical resistivity tomography. In the right hand side, the figure you are seeing is from the field. So all the sensors are buried in the ground and only uh, this small box and a solar panel and a rain gauge you can see from the top. The system is designed to be to work to, to be uh, in a very low cost so that it can be scalable. It consumes very low power uh, so that it can work uh, in a uh, remote area with a smaller solar and it is designed to be de deployed in a remote area and especially to work uh, in, uh, in, in, in uh, places where there is uh, extreme events. So this is the workflow of the prime system. So we have the, um, the motion. We this all processing is automated. And we have the sensors, which is sensing. Then it is creating and it is generating images, which is basically uh, the resistivity images. It is it is capturing the ground resistivity, and from there uh, we are extracting the moisture content, and the data is going into the uh, into the dashboard. And then uh, we are using softwares uh, to interpret it. Uh, the below. Diagram is hardware instrumentation, instrumentation showing the sensor array, which is connected to the prime system and through the router, uh, it is coming into the wireless uh, network connectivity and we are able to see it in our computer. So 
so talking a little bit about uh, how what is resistivity uh, the resistivity is the resistance of the ground uh, when we pass electric current uh, we measure the resistance and the resistance on the ground is the indirect parameter which porosity uh, moisture content fluid conductivity temperature and uh, the properties of the soil other properties of the soil so it it is a indirect way to understand how the there is a difference in the soil in the subsurface how uh, moisture is going to change time in the subsurface and also it is dependent upon temperature so it's very important to capture temperature while we are capturing the resistivity so in this table here we can see that there are different uh, soil materials with a different different resistivity value such as if you are seeing a clay you will see there is a low resistivity on the other hand if you have a hard rock such as granite you will have a very high resistivity okay so and also with the water content uh, we see that the resistivity value goes down and temperature and uh, resistivity also have a uh, inverse relation so and in this diagram we, we are seeing that uh, the clay this is how the structure of the clay is which is affecting the flow of the water and when we have a granular granular uh, the the medium the flow is little different so uh, what i wanted to make a point here is that uh, obviously uh, the resistivity is a indicator uh, for understanding the subsurface for understanding the change in the moisture content and uh, and it is dependent upon temperature but at the same time we need strong calibration from the field uh, to have this data because this is all indirect measurements and we cannot totally rely upon it so for that we need to have a regular calibration with the soil collected from the site uh, this table is a standard table uh, which is showing that how uh, with the change in resistivity we can estimate that this can be the possible rock type and again it has to be correlated with the borehole data now uh, bringing up results from the field site so uh, this is a resistivity uh, which has been uh, taken from the data of uh, 2019 uh, 2019 february so here we can see uh, the sli the slide uh, in the top of the slide there is a very high resistive irregular upper layer and uh, in the bottom of the slide we are seeing some deep conductive areas which is also indicating the water table uh, as verified from the borehole and also in the lower part there is a more conductive zone so uh, this slide actually is having a different different resistivities uh, in the, in in the range of uh, like uh, 50 meters why this is so because uh, there was a landslide in this area in 2005 so because of that there is a lot of debris material that has came so there is a change in lithology in the small area itself there is a lot of variation in the lithology and that's why we are seeing a difference in the moisture in, in the moisture content coming up now in the same site we have uh, sensors deployed other sensors deployed uh, from our amrita center such as uh, rainfall rain gauge um, moisture sensor pore pressure sensor piezometers so we are when we compare the data between uh, both the sensors it's very much uh, getting correlated and in the in the in the top figure we are seeing that uh, there is a change in the rainfall and then here uh, in the bottom figure this is from the data from the prime system so we have taken six uh time lapse to study the uh, monsoon onset of 2019 and uh the result shows that there is a very strong uh, resistivity contrast and that is because of the geology and the weather in, and the weathering intensity that we are seeing and the uh, superficial layer has a very irregular extension at the depth uh, that's representing the variable thickness of the soil that we are seeing and that's because of the debris coming from the top and the lower part of the of the slope we are seeing it is more conductive so uh, that's basically where a uh, very shallow uh, weathered rock which is a saprolite uh, weathered uh, bedrock soil is there and it's uh, it's basically the soil from the last uh, 2005 uh, landslide and this uh, time lapse resistivity is uh, also saying the showing the variation in the moisture content so we have a very interesting observation that the first rainfall event in april uh, was associated with a superficial decrease in resistivity in the poor vegetated area in the top part 
and after one month of the rainfall, uh, the decrease in resistivity affected the larger and the deeper area in the upper part of the slope. So this is highlighting where the moisture is building up. So and resistivity is also correlating well uh, with the poor poor water pressure. So what we are seeing is this method is a very good method to uh, to uh, understand uh, the to understand and to monitor uh, the moisture content, the variation in the hydrological parameters, if we have some more data from the field. So this was one case study that I, I presented and I think I, I don't have time. Uh, so I will skip maybe this part. Uh, but uh, another study that we have done is uh, site, site specific uh, from taking the system from the site specific to the catchment skill and where uh, I am working more in my PhD. So, uh, sir, do I do I have time to go ahead or fifty seconds? I am seeing, but I think you take advantage of little extra time. So, oh, is it okay? Yeah, uh, nobody is waiting till tomorrow morning or tomorrow afternoon. So, yeah. Okay. So uh, this is another study which uh, which. Uh, which, which I have been part of is uh, to take this uh, system from a site specific and how we can uh, cover a larger area. So we have taken a catchments in the Devi Kulam Taluka, uh, the small watersheds. And uh, in this study, what we have hypothesized is uh, uh, based on the literature survey and the past field experiences, which I have, I have taken. So the landslides that are occurring are mainly because of adversely oriented uh, joint planes and they are mostly situated along the first or and also uh, they are very much related to the uh, to the vegetation. So we have seen that wherever there is a change in agriculture from the past to the present, uh, there is a vegetation. Uh, it's related to the vegetation and also it's uh, related to the roads, uh, the construction of roads, so different types of roads we categorized and saw that it was very much related. And it's all structurally controlled lineaments and drainages are defining the flow of landslides and also excess to removal from construction of house. The data that we have collected are uh, from different, different places such as our Amrita landslide monitoring system is there then GSI reports and research publications and uh, field investigations and remote sensing. And we analyzed 46 prominent landslides. So I, because I have, uh, I, I know it's, it's too late actually. Uh, the geology of the, this is the geology map of the basin that, that I have been working on. And then and the highest number of land was concentrated in the granitic gneisses. And also I really correlated uh, the structural uh, data, data from the field and also uh, with the slope uh, at which it is oriented. So I will quickly uh, uh, go to the conclusion uh, also relating uh, the landslide that has reactivated the landslide that were new in 2018 and the landslide which did not, uh, uh, which uh, remained residentially formed the older landslide which did not reactivate it. So try to compare all those data with the different, different parameters that in the area and I have got some very interesting results. So uh, I will just conclude uh, my talk by going to the conclusion directly that the fluvial geomorphology plays a very uh, vital role in uh, the construction of such erosional landform. So we can say that this is an erosional landform from our geological knowledge and in this area as it is also seen in other, other areas other uh, erosional landform that uh, geomorphology really plays a very important role. So uh, we have to consider that while uh, man while uh, making a sustainable development plan for such basins. Then flooding event and consequent mass uh, wasting are natural phenomena. So it will happen. May maybe like uh, if uh, like it's a erosional landform. So it's going to happen. It's 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 not like it will not happen or you can stop it. Maybe you, if you, uh, because of human interventions, it, it has aggregate, uh, aggregated or its speed has increased, but definitely uh, mass movements are going on, mass wasting is going on. And uh, uh, rivers and capacity of sustaining lives, therefore civilizations, yeah, obviously occur near them. So it, you always will be associated with rivers and drainages. Uh, but uh, what is happening is uh, the drainage channels uh, people are basically ignoring uh, the way the drainage is moving 
and they are making houses on top of that so that's why mostly uh, they are suffering they are not uh, considering uh, the proper solutions before constructing the house they are not aware of the behavior of the mountain and then it is also causing a lot of uh, life loss and property so with this i'll conclude my talk thank you and if there is any question thank you uh, balmukund uh, there is uh, there is shudesh kumar's question sir is asking how can you check or return the discharge of excessive soil moisture is it feasible to draw the most vulnerable flood prone tracts in upper catchment tracts of a basin and link these sites with human settlements it's actually a very good question sir it's a very good question and focusing on the same thing that is it possible to actually delineate the vulnerable zones and i have got quite uh, interesting results in my initial studies that uh, when uh, we saw the landslide susceptibility map uh, that has been created based on the that has been uh, the geo factors that we have derived from the satellite data and using the existing landslides uh, and landslide incidences we are seeing that uh, the new landslides are coming in the same places so there are very new very less amount of new areas that are actually either the old slides are getting triggered or wherever there is a drainage blockage or wherever there is a slope modification in an abrupt way at that place only landslides are happening so it's very much possible to delineate the area the in fact government has also delineated the area in fact this year also if you see the rajamala landslide it was in the red zone where uh where it was already delineated that this area can slide but uh, still a lot of work has to be done to understand more uh, about the issues in how uh it is getting controlled and how special temporarily it is wearing it it has to be uh, made more accurate but definitely uh, the models are predicting it to a very good extent yeah, yeah. so there is another question how can we avoid landslide which you have indicated at your conclusion this slide probably quite a bit but if you want to comment further on it how can we avoid landslide yeah it is also a very good question and that is what uh, basically what i feel as a geologist is uh, if i avoid a loss of life and loss of property that should be my goal because landslides is going to happen you cannot stop a landslide because it's a natural mass wasting phenomena but how can you protect yourself from a landslide or how can you protect uh, your community from uh, or the property of the community from the from the sliding so it's a better sustainable planning is needed uh, when you are developing uh, a community or you are when you are allotting houses in the hilly areas it should be allotted in the places which are not going to slide at least in 100 years if you are making at a places which is going to slide then it is going to be a problem the another thing is that there is a lot of uh, geo engineering solutions that has came up which is very much promising uh, to uh, stabilize the hill slopes so there are ways to stabilize the hill slopes but it can it again takes lot of cost the third and the most important thing that uh, that also is there is prevention is better than cure so here the early warning system comes into play where uh, you can warn people uh, ahead of time that a uh, uh, slide can happen so please evacuate this place so if you do like that then uh, i think uh, more loss can be uh, can be saved uh, any qu quick idea about uh, this landslide detection system or this knowledge system you are developing to commercialize to develop a sustainable business model because government machinery very often fails because of their intrinsic issues whereas ngos are always may not have the capacity to handle this huge uh, problem particularly where the economic situation so is it possible is there any model to develop these uh, knowledge or these engineering solutions as a business i think uh, this question ma'am maybe manisha ma'am can answer better okay i think everybody is tired now uh, ah. so, <laughs> yes ma'am uh, is there anything specific sanjay sir did you ask anything no, no i was just asking that uh, as a ngo ngo has its own limitations 
government machineries has their own limitations is there a sustainable business model we can develop from these geoengineering solutions or geological solutions which balmukund is proposing so the, there are different options there sir there are some of those things are for improving or enhancing the slope where you give more strength to the slope so that you can avoid or delay